All right, I am back with another build, and today we're going to be looking at what is probably now one of my favorite battlefield control builds. Uh, I haven't really explored many of the wizard subclasses. I'll look at the more popular options like Evocation, Divination, and I've even used Transmutation probably more times than I actually should have. But things like Enchantment, Conjuration, and Illusion are things that I've not really focused on in much detail and I want to change that. So today I decided to take a look at Enchantment Wizard because I've always been absolutely a massive fan of the level 10 feature split enchantment and of course while we do get that really really late, uh, the other features that we actually do get from Enchantment Wizard are still pretty goddamn good and I actually really really like them. So I wanted to do a build focused on Enchantment Wizard. Now of course this build is going to be fairly simple as I did want to get pretty much all of the enchantment spells which means this, this wizard is going to a pretty high level however we do take a quick multi-class dip to get a bit of extra utility and flavor that just makes the build fun to roleplay and overall I actually really did enjoy making this character I decided to go for a Giff Yankee because of course Giff Yankee and Psychic spells and enchantment and illusion it's kind of a thing on this channel anyway but I kind of liked the idea of picking up a of like kind of making a older Giff Yankee who's probably slightly less serious like perhaps they've just been around so long that the whole you know Vlack if war and all that perhaps they're one of those Giff Yankees you kind of just was like a little bit jokey. I know that's not very common in their society, but who cares? Let's make characters the buck for trend. And as such, the multi-class dip that we're going to take is going to fit that quite nicely. And honestly, I absolutely love this build. This build gets a ton of fun spells for obviously enchantment spells are some of the most fun in the game. And then it's going to feel really good for your progression because you'll be able to be really good as the face of the party if you want to be, as well as just being a great battlefield control character, like I said, that still has the capability to deal a lot of damage. But especially when you get to the late game, you will just be able to shut down some encounters completely and again this build worked really well solo in solo testing but of course if you actually manage to get your hands on some party members for the test outside of the testing that I normally would do then this build is just going to do absolutely incredible and the fact is obviously the big thing I wanted to fix with this build was like you know obviously if we're going to be dealing with you know enchantment spells that means we want our spell save DC to be really high by the time this build is finished it seems like you have a 95% chance to succeed your enchantment spells so yeah, this build's pretty, pretty good. I, I really, really like it. It's fairly simple, so it's actually accessible for a lot of newer players as they, if they want to play throughout the game. Maybe you want, they, you want to use this on uh, maybe Gale, for example, because Gale's a wizard. You could even use this on Lazel if you want to play Lazel in a very, very different way from the norm. But again, for newer players, I actually think this build is going to work out really, really nicely just to be a great support unit for your build, uh, for your party composition, I should say. And I do want to have a look at the other kind of lesser used wizard subclasses as I kind of go through. Uh, I definitely want to look at Illusion and Conjuration because I want to see if I can do something with them. Because uh, let's be honest, while Illusion definitely has some stuff going for it, it's not until kind of like the level 10 feature where it gets really interesting. And Conjuration, I don't know, I definitely have to think of something there. But anyways, let's get into the build now because I've rambled on long enough. We're going to be starting off, surprise, surprise, as a wizard. Uh, wizard is going to give us a bunch of stuff right off the bat. Namely, uh, we're going to gain access to our cantrips here. I've just gone for some typical f level one uh, wizard choices. We're going to go for friends here because it's an enchantment cantrip that's going to give us advantage on all charisma checks against non-hostile creatures. Yes, this can turn creatures hostile. However doesn't really matter in the long run if you're not playing on something like Tactician or Honor Mode. If you are playing on Tactician or Honor Mode, you might want to be a bit careful about using this, but otherwise it's not a huge deal. Next up we have Firebolt, just your standard range damage cantrip for this build, and Shocking Grasp in case someone gets a little too close. Next up for our level 1 spells, we get to pick 6 and these are the 6 that you will want. First up, Mage Armor. We are going to be wearing clothing with this build, although be it because you are a Githyanki, you do have access to light and medium armor if you want to go down that route, and you could pick up something else here. And there's pretty much no reason not to. You'd get a decent amount of AC if you went that route. However, the clothing I've chosen, I've chosen specifically because it boosts our spell save DC, so we are going to want to get our hands on that, and probably if you want to absolutely maximize your chance to use your enchantment spells. But if you want to use medium armor, especially in the early game, and it's actually a really solid option. Next up, Charm Person. We already have friends, so this might not be this might not be the most useful thing in the world in most cases, but it is an enchantment spell, so I did want to pick it up. Basically, this is a version of friends that you can use in combat as well, so you may have some usage here. Next up, Magic Missile, standard ranged damage spell for any wizard. 
And then also Shield, the standard defensive spell for any spellcaster. One of the best spells in the game, pretty much a required pickup most of the time. And then finally, two more enchantment spells. Sleep, which is going to allow us to put our opponents to sleep, surprise, surprise. And it's hit point based, not spell save DC based. So this is actually extremely useful in the early game. Again, this is one of those builds that's going to feel good to play at pretty much all levels of play, which is absolutely great. And sleep is just a great control spell that you're going to get a lot of usage out of. And finally, Tasha's Hideous Laughter, allowing you to knock a creature prone. Surprisingly enough, this is one of the only concentration spells that I've chosen at this level, so you actually have a lot of freedom in how you go about this sort of thing. And knocking enemies prone is great for both you and your teammates, again, at all levels of play, so I think this is going to be a great spell to have. Next up, ability scores. Dexterity and Constitution are both going to be at 14. These are just about the right number to get a decent amount of AC and a decent amount of HP. Even though we are a wizard, we are quite squishy. The whole point is that we're going to be stopping enemies from attacking us outright, thanks to our battlefield control and enchantment spells. So I'm less worried about concentra concentration saves and HP overall, especially when, if this build works as intended, which it does, the enemies are going to be going for your party members rather than you, so just bring along Karl like the Barbarian to tank everything for you anyway. Next up, Intelligence at 16. Obviously, our main spellcasting modifier. We want this as high as we can get it. Wisdom is at 9 because I had an extra skill point left over. Unfortunately, being at 9 doesn't really do anything for us, so a shame and charisma is at 14 because we are going to be using some charisma based spells in this build and with our massive amounts of boosts to spell save dc for our equipment we're not going to have to worry too much about that lower charisma score as it's not going to be the main focus of the build but we are going to get some pretty nice stuff out of it next up and also obviously if we go charisma we can do a lot we could be really good in dialogue so that's great next up for our skill proficiencies i've gone with the sage background because it just kind of felt right to me but something like entertainer or charlatan if you want to kind of go down that more sort of like goofy and showmanship route because guess what we're taking bard levels in a minute uh <laughs> you can go down that sort of route as well but going with sage is going to give us arcana and history which makes sense for me for a gift yankee wizard as well as being able to go with investigation and insight Next up, I do want to quickly take a one level dip into Bard, because Bard is going to give us a bunch of stuff that is going to really make up the flavor of this build. Like I say, this is I think this is an older Gif Yankee who almost kind of has like a Jahira vibe to her, where she is still quite serious and quite methodical and obviously tactical in battle with the whole enchantment spell thing, but is also quite, you know, jokey and kind of like, you know, sassy and all that sort of thing. Kind of like if you fused Lazel and Jahira together, you would get this character. So I feel like having a little bit of bardic flair would be quite fun. Imagine this character being sat in a Gif Yankee crash, fiddling with their lyre, as that is my instrument of choice for them, and one of their, like, Gif Yankee ch uh, Chithrax or Kithrak or whatever they're bloody called. Chirai? No. I'm sorry, I'm not familiar with Gif Yankee culture. Uh, they, like, comes up and it's like, what are you doing fiddling with that thing instead of tr instead of training or preparing for some sort of battle? And they'll just go, it's called a pastime. I'm old, let me have a pastime. You know, stuff like that, right? <laughs> and I know Gif Yankee technically don't age when they're not on the... And when they're in the astral plane and blah, 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 blah. Just let me have fun with this one, guys. It's fun to play around with concepts and mess with things a bit, you know? <laughs> Anyways. Let's get back into the cantrips. Of course, we're here for Vicious Mockery, an enchantment psychic damage cantrip, which again plays into that kind of like sassy old lady thing where she's just throwing insults at people and it's dealing damage. This will synergize with all of our enchantment related kind of buffs that we're going to get from Enchantment Wizard. So I wanted to pick it up here. And your second cantrip can be whatever you like. I'm going to go with Mage Hand here, specifically because yes, Givenki do get Mage Hand as a racial feature. However, it is once per long rest i believe so this is going to give, allow you to cast it all the time which i think fits on theme for this build next up our spells we're going to get to pick some enchantment spells and the game has picked up most of them for us so here we go our first enchantment spell is going to be heroism allowing you to spend your concentration to make it so that yourself or a target you choose cannot be frightened and gains five temporary hit points each turn fun little spell it's another enchantment spell which means it will synergize with our later features Another enchantment spell is Bane. Up to three creatures you can see for the cost of your concentration or take a negative 1d4 penalty to attack rolls and saving throws. Pretty good overall. Maybe not the thing you want to be concentrating on all the time, but it can definitely help out, especially in the early game. And Dissonant Whispers, our big damage dealing enchantment spell. This is going to deal psychic damage, which is great for us, and it can potentially frighten creatures, meaning they have disadvantage on ability checks and attack rolls, and they cannot move. This is just going to mean that we're going to be able to just lay on the, the pain, making it so that our teammates have an opportunity to attack with ease. 
And then finally, your last spell can be whatever you like here. Uh, it's entirely up to you. I like picking up Speak with Animals because, again, it opens up a ton of cutscenes and roleplay options and all that sort of thing when you're playing throughout the game. So I quite like going with this. As I said, I'm going to pick a Lyre as our starting instrument because I like it. And we also do get an ability, we do get a skill proficiency here. Uh, it's entirely up to you what you want to take here, but I would definitely recommend taking something that isn't one of the charisma options. And I'll explain why in a minute. So I would say maybe taking something like religion. I feel like a Giffy Yankee, obviously religion, Vlakif, yada yada yada, all that sort of thing. But feel free to take something like acrobatics, sleight of hand, stealth, whatever you think works for us. The reason we're not going to be taking uh, one of the charisma things is because we're going to have access as a Githyanki to astral knowledge, meaning that by selecting astral knowledge charisma, we will gain all of these proficiencies anyway. So taking one of these proficiencies here would be a waste. If you're not playing a Githyanki, then feel free to take one of them here, probably persuasion if I had to guess. Otherwise, if you're playing as a Githyanki, use astral knowledge charisma here instead. So you're going to have a pretty wide skill set as it is. Next up, that is it for Bard, because I don't really want any more Bard levels, because I want access to level 6 spells. So we're going to go back over to Wizard, Wizard, and we are going to stay there for now. Which means now we finally get to pick up our subclass. We also do get an Enhanced Leap at this point, for once per long rest, which is quite nice. But, of course, subclass, and you already know what we're going for, we're going for Enchantment Wizard. At level 2 of Enchantment Wizard, you're going to get access to the usual thing, Enchantment Savant, which means that all your Enchantment spells learned from scrolls are cheaper, which is great. And of course, being a wizard, we gain access to all scrolls, so any scrolls you come across, you're going to be able to use. And we're also going to gain access to Hypnotic Gaze, allowing you to charm or incapacitate a creature that is within melee range of you. It cannot attack you, and it cannot act. And you can maintain your, constant, your Hypnotic Gaze by spending an action each turn to extend its duration. So you can basically just pick an enemy and choose to take them out of the fight completely, while your allies and, or, can do the rest of the work for you. So if there's a problematic enemy on the field and you can you can use this on them and they're not going to be an issue anymore which is really really important next up we do get to pick a couple of more spells and there's not really too much that I, else that i want to pick up here so i'm just going to pick up a couple of utility options and of course feel free to play around with your spell selection here this is probably what you want your early game uh, spell list to look like Next up at Wizard Level 3, we're going to gain access to Level 2 spells, which means we're going to gain access to some really great early to mid-game spells. The first one being Crown of Madness, allowing you to instill madness in a humanoid enemy, making them attack the creature closest to them other than you, if even if it is allied. So that means you can cause enemies to start attacking each other, which is going to be really, really fun. I've made an entire build around this spell before, the Apostle of the Dark Sun, and I think this spell is just so fun to play around with, especially at those early to mid levels. Again, this build is going to feel really, really good speaking of spells that feel really good to use hold person one of the greatest enchantment spells in the game allowing you to hold a humanoid enemy still they cannot move act or react and attacks from within three meters are always critical hits again that barbarian in your party is gonna love you for casting this one and your paladin and your fighter everyone's gonna love you for casting that one so you want to definitely make sure you have these spells locked into your loadout probably something along the lines of this uh maybe if you don't care so much about magic missile you don't really need that option maybe have something a bit like this Next up, at Wizard Level 4, we're going to gain access to a few things, namely another cantrip, and we kind of have everything we need cantrip-wise at the moment, so it's really just up to you to pick something that you like here. I always like Ray of Frost, I really like being able to reduce my enemy's movement speed, and having different uh, elemental damage options is always great for overcoming resistances. Next up, for our spells, we've kind of run out of actual enchantment spells at this point, so I'm going to pick up a couple of utility options that I think make sense for this build. Misty Step makes sense, because at level 5 of Githyanki, we're getting Misty Step once per long rest. Now, we're going to be able to cast it as much as we like, but always having that one option, one, the one-time use without using a spell slot is still great. As well as, I'm going to pick up Blindness. Now, Blindness is actually a necromancy spell, but I do think it fits in the purview of enchantment, maybe sort of illusion, at least to me. We get to blind a creature. Attack rolls against it have advantage, and the foe attacks with disadvantage. This lasts for 10 turns, and believe it or not, does not require your concentration. So you can do this whilst to multiple different enemies while still concentrating on a powerful enchantment spell. Seriously, the battlefield control options you have with this build are absolutely insane, and blindness really actually does help with that. So I would definitely recommend keeping it in your loadout. 
Next up, we do get to choose a feat, and unfortunately, nothing too interesting here. We are just taking an ability score improvement and bumping up that intelligence as quickly as we can. Remember, higher intelligence means higher spell save DC, which means more chances for your enchantment spells to go off, and you want them to go off as much as possible. Next up, at wizard level 5, you're going to gain access to level 3 spells, and of course, I, there are a couple of spells I'm going to want to grab here. We don't really have enchantment spells, though. Believe it or not, none of the level 3 options here are actually enchantment, which is a bit strange. So we're going to pick up a couple of spells that are just useful generically, again, proper wizard spells, that are still going to fit the theme and the vibe. Of course, counter spell being the first one, just stopping a spell from being cast. More battlefield control, can't go wrong with that. As well as slow, one of my favourite concentration options in the game. It is a transmutation spell, and if you really want to stay on the theme of this build, probably wouldn't use this one too much unless it's a dire situation, but slow is going to be really, really nice. It targets up to six creatures and slows them, meaning that they, their movement and actions are effective, and their AC and dexterity saves are reduced by two. Specifically, they can't make actions and bonus actions on the same turn, and their movement speed is halved. It is really, really detrimental to massive groups of enemies, and again, you can still kind of do some other stuff as well, even if you're concentrating on this with things like blindness and the like, but I would prefer to use the enchantment spells because it feels a bit more on theme, but in the mid game when you're up against big mobs of enemies, slow is your go-to spell if you really just want to shut down an encounter. So I would definitely recommend popping that in your build somewhere. Encounter spell is always good. Next up, at wizard level 6, we're going to be getting one of our subclass features, and that is Instinctive Charm, which is extremely fun. Charm an enemy that is attacking you. They will attack a new target, if possible, as a reaction. So even if an enemy manages to break through all of your enchantment spells and goes for an attack on you, guess what? You can just say, nope and they have to attack someone else. That just makes this build way more, not tanky, but it's great at avoiding damage for the most part. Again, that's why I'm not so worried about that lower constitution. Uh, but of course you can patch that up with items if you so desire. So Instinctive Charm is actually a really fun feature and I really enjoy having it here. Next up, some more level three options and it's entirely up to you what you want to pick here. Like I said, we've kind of got everything. So I'm going to pick some generically useful options here that I think could still fit the vibe. First up, obviously you could go for Fear or Hypnotic Pattern. Those are both illusion spells, but obviously Psychic Attacks and all that would make sense. I actually quite like picking up Mirror, mirror Image if you really want that extra armor class. And again, the Mirror Image will stick around for quite a while because enemies won't be attacking you so much. But again, on the off chance that they do, you're going to have some really high AC. Combine this with Shield and you're not going to get hit that often. So I would like having this up as a utility option just in case we need it. And then I would probably say I would pick up Fear or Hypnotic Pattern here. I would say because Crown of Madness kind of like and like our hypnotic charms and all that they all kind of fit into like this purview of enchantment I would say hypnotic pattern is actually the one you probably want to go for here I think it does make the most sense so I'm going to slot that one in here and I think at this point in the game sleep might not be as useful unless you're upcasting it and you probably don't want to be using your higher level spell slots too often if you feel like sleep is still doing a good job for you then keep it around but I think at this point I would either probably replace sleep or Tasha's with uh, maybe mirror image but I'll leave that up to you Next up at wizard level 7, we're up to the level 4 spell slots, and which means we are going to get to pick up another enchantment spell, that being Confusion, allowing you to confuse a group of creatures, causing them to attack at random, wander around aimlessly, and occasionally just skip their turn entirely. Its concentration lasts for 3 turns, but those 3 turns should be all you and your party need. And it's up to you kind of what other spell you want to pick here, we're already out of enchantment spells again, believe it or not, uh, so I actually quite like picking up Autoluke's Resilient Sphere here. It kind of still fits in the vibe of just taking an enemy out of combat at least for a short amount of time or just saving your your ally at the last minute it encloses the target in a sphere of shimmering force blocking all incoming damage and spell effects however the sphere reduces the target's movement speed by half and also prevents it from casting spells or dealing damage so again if you just need to take an enemy out of the fight at three turns you can do that here to be fair banishment can do the same thing but this but banishment uh only gets rid of an ally it gets rid of an enemy for two turns whereas Obelix resilient sphere can take an enemy out of combat for three turns or protect an ally for three turns so i find it tends to have a little bit more utility at least in my opinion so feel free to prepare that as you see fit 
Next up, at wizard level 8, you're going to gain access to, well, more level 4 spells. And again, really up to you what you want to choose here. We, again, we kind of have everything that I say this build directly wants and fits the vibe. So I'm going to do some generic wizard stuff here and actually pick up a summoning spell, that being Conjure Minor Elemental, because I quite like it here. And I would probably pick up Fear as well, because you can kind of say it fits. We also do get a feat at this level, and I'm going to take that ability score improvement to max out our intelligence. Next up, at wizard level 9, you're going to gain access to level 5 spells, and here they are, the big ones. Dominate Person and Hold Monster, two of the most powerful spells in this game, in my opinion. Dominate Person means that you just get to see it take a humanoid enemy and force it to fight with you. It has to make a wisdom saving throw, but our spell save DC is going to be so high that the likelihood of an enemy succeeding that save is going to be very, very low, even in the late game. An absolutely amazing spell that I really do recommend for this build. And then, something that's somehow even more powerful, Hold Monster. The exact same thing as Hold as hold person but you're no longer restricted to humanoids any creature can be paralyzed steel watches everything it is great and it what does the exact same thing they cannot move act to react and attacks from within three meters are always critical hits absolutely huge i would definitely say these are required to be in your prepared spell loadout And next up at wizard level 10, we get split enchantment. Every single enchantment spell that only targets a single creature that I just talked about, dominate person, crown of madness, vicious mockery, hold monster, hold person, all of that stuff, you can now use it on two enemies in a single cast. I'm not even kidding, you'll see in the combat footage that I just ended the combat encounter before it even began. Thanks to dominate person and hold monster, the, the, the encounter was just over, I didn't even get hit once it was incredible and this is going to be the thing that is going to allow you to just completely shut down a lot of encounters in the game being able to just quickly see two big boss enemies and just say nope hold monster on both of them and they're done and then or if you have a couple of humanoid enemies that you want to fight on your side boom there you are they're with you now it is just so so amazing i absolutely love this feature Again, this is one of the things that I kind of wish was came up a little bit earlier in the build, but again, I feel like if it was any earlier than Act 3, it would actually be a bit too strong. So I think it's okay where it is. I would love to play around with this in tabletop. Next up, cantrips. We're going to gain access to another cantrip here. Again, just choose your favorite. It really doesn't matter. And also, we do gain access to a couple of more level 5 spells. I'm going to grab Conjure Elemental because, again, at the end of the day, if for some reason you don't have any party members with you, maybe you're doing a solo run, then Conjure Elemental and Conjure Minor Elemental are going to give you some more bodies to work with. So I feel like they just, they're just they helpful for just kind of taking the enemy aggro off of you and letting you just cast your enchantment spells in peace. And again, feel free to pick whatever you like for another option for this build uh, as a spell option. It really doesn't matter. Considering the weapon that I've chosen for this build, I'm going to go with Blight. And then finally, feel free to choose whatever you like for that last slot. And finally, at wizard level 11, we're going to gain access to level 6 spells, which means we're going to get the one spell that I didn't get the last time I messed with Enchantment Wizard, Otto's Irresistible dance. Otto's irresist irresistible dance is going to cause a creature to start dancing, making them unable to take actions or move, and its attackers have advantage on their attack rolls. And the dancer has disadvantage on attack rolls and dex saves. It's here completely just for fun, and it circles all the way back to that bard level we took at the very start of the build, at least thematically. Just a fun spell to pick up, and I really, really wanted to get it in this build, so there you go. You do have access to kind of any other spell here from the level 6 spell list that you like, or something from level 5. I like globe of invulnerability here because it just kind of feels like it makes sense for like a gif yankee war mage or something to just have globe of invulnerability so i'm gonna go with that here and that is the build overall what you're going to be getting out of this is a ton of cool stuff uh, you're getting gain access to the spells from every level of play. You'll have access to spell scrolls. You can learn any spells that you want. But the battlefield control here you get is insane. You see all those spells on my hotbar that are lit up with that white square? Those are all of the ones being inflicted, inflicted by 
split enchantment, which is a passive that you can turn on or off. So yeah, every single one is being affected here, meaning that hold, hold person, Tashes, all of that can be used on two enemies for a single cast. You're also going to get useful support stuff and utility stuff and roleplay stuff. So you're going to get things like Bardic Inspiration, Speak of Animals, you're just going to get everything. Heck, even Vicious Mockery gets split cast, which I think is just super, super fun. And you're going to be able to put extra bodies on the board with summoning spells, and you're just going to be able to prevent yourself from getting hit entirely with your various uh, wizard features. Honestly, I love this build. It is simple but effective. It works on ev it works on most enemies in the game. It's a great build, I think, for someone who may be playing through the game for the first time. As again, the leveling scheme is not too complicated, and the concept is fairly simple. Just pick the spells that say enchantment and go. Uh, I think, and again, that one level dip of bar just giving this build a ton of unique flavor just feels so so right. I really really like this build overall, like I said. But let's get into the equipment because I'll be honest. I kept it fairly simple this time. I kept it fairly, fairly simple this time. Uh, I mainly just wanted to focus on spell save DC. That was my main thing. Just making it so that these enchantment spells have pretty much a 100% chance to succeed when you cast them, at least as close to that as possible throughout all areas of the game. Of course, there will always be critical successes on saving throws. That is just a, that is just a fact of life. But this will still kind of most of the time work. So let's get into our main weapon here, which is the Staff of Woe. This is going to give us a plus one uh, bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. Hey, there you go. And when a creature affected by your spells fails any associated saving throw, you regain a d4 of hit points. Yeah, another sort of thing about this build, you have a lot of HP regen, so in the off chance you do get hit, you're just going to heal it back, which I think is quite fun. Uh, so yeah, anytime one of our enchantment spells affects our enemy, that means they failed a saving throw, so that we're going to regain a bit of HP, which is great. It's also a plus two staff. If you need to bonk someone, you can bonk someone. And you also do get a casting of Blight uh, once per long rest for free, which, hey, you might as well. Next, so, but of course that is an Act 3 option, so I do have some early game options for you. We have the Melf's First Staff, which also gives you a plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls, is a plus one staff, and comes with a free casting of Melf's Acid Arrow. Uh, this is basically just here to bump up your spell to save DC in the early game. Another early game option for you would be the Spell Sparkler. Whenever you deal damage with a spell or cantrip, you gain two Lightning Charges. Now, that may not seem like it matters for this build. Again, Lightning Charges just boost your, you know, Lightning damage output. And this isn't really meant to be an attacking build so much, but it is going to synergize with my early game robe option, the Protect the Spark Wall. On its own, it still gives you a plus one bonus to your spell safe DC, which is going to be great for that early game. Having this much of a boost to spell safe DC this early on is actually really, really nice. But of course, if you have lightning charges, you gain a plus one bonus to armor class and saving throws, making it so you're, you, have a, you have a bit more armor class, which is the main thing there. So overall, I think this is a pretty good early game combination. One of these two staffs and this robe to really boost up that spell safe DC right from the get-go. Next up, we have the Circlet of Mental Anguish. Now, obviously, could have put Hood of the Robe here, uh, Hood of the Weave, I should say, to get a plus two bonus to spell save DC. But Circle, Circlet of Mental Anguish felt a bit more right for this kind of Giff Yankee build. It, you gain Psychic Leech. When an enemy fails a Charisma, Intelligence, or Wisdom saving throw against one of your spells or cantrips, you regain 1d4 hit points. So combine this with Woe, and that's 2d4 hit points of recovery every time you get off one of your enchantment spells. I mean, it might not be that much of a big deal, especially when you get into Act 3, but I quite like this little buff. I think it's nice that you can kind of have this bit of self-sufficient healing as you kind of do what you're already going to be doing, but you can swap this for anything else you like if you don't think you really need it. Next up, Cloak of the Weave. Basically, we're just slapping this here in our cloak slot for an extra plus one bonus to spell save DC. Nothing else really to it. Absorb Elements is nice, but we're probably not really going to be using that. And now, the Robe of the Weave. Again, another plus one bonus to spell save DC and spell attack rolls. And whenever we succeed a saving throw against a spell, we regain 1d6 hit points. So if somebody decides to forego hitting us with a sword and tries to cast a spell on us, if we succeed the saving throw, we're going to keep regaining those hit points. Again, this build has a lot of healing. This is also going to give us a plus two to our armor class, which is always nice. Uh, but as well as we have the brain drain gloves. Whenever we deal psychic damage, which... I mean, we have the options here. We have Dissonant Whispers and Vicious Mockery. We're going to inflict Mental Fatigue. Mental Fatigue gives our enemies a negative one penalty 
to wisdom, intelligence, and charisma saving throws for every turn remaining. And of course, this can stack. And whenever the creature fails a wisdom, intelligence, or charisma saving throw while having five or more stacks of this condition, they take 1d4 psychic damage. But unfortunately, the condition ends. But this is going to help us have an even higher chance to continuously inflict these conditions, allowing us to switch and swap which enchantment spells we're using on the fly without too much worry about dropping concentration and losing the first spell's effect, because we're just going to be able to apply the new one pretty much immediately if we're affecting the same target, which if you're down to just a couple of targets or you're just trying to keep out of the main combat, then you probably will be kind of switch, switch, smooth, switching and swapping spell effects as you go. Uh, you may think this is a bit overkill, you may think this is a bit useless, feel free to throw something else on here if you so desire. And for our boots on, I just have the evasive shoes here because I wanted a bit more armor class. Between this mage armor and all of the equipment that we have, you're going to just come out of this build with about 18 AC, which is pretty damn decent. Next up, for our accessories, I have the Amulet of the Devout. This is mainly here for a plus two bonus to spell save DC. If you're a cleric, you do gain an additional use of channel divinity, but we obviously are not a cleric here. Basically, it's more spell save DC. However, there are a couple of other amulets I could recommend to you. The first one being the spell Crux Amulet, which would allow you to restore one of your spell slots uh, once per long rest, any, of the, any level spell slot. So you can effectively have two level six spell slots with this build, which would be very, very nice. And once you've used the effect, you could just take it off and put the Amulet of the Devout back on. So you probably want the Spellcrux Amulet in your inventory all the time, regardless. And it's a good Act 2 option, whereas this is from Act 3. The other one I could possibly recommend to you, but I would probably rather have this on maybe like one of your uh, frontline fighters, would be the Amulet of uh, Constitution, the Amulet of Greater Health, uh, which you can pick up in Act 3, which would allow you to dump your Constitution down to 8, uh, bring, because the Amulet will bring your Constitution up to 23 and give you advantage on constitution saving throws, meaning that you will never drop concentration on an enchantment spell. Those are a couple of options, other options for you if you don't want to go with this. Next up, the Ring of Mental Inhibition. Whenever a foe fails a saving throw against one of your spells or actions, they gain mental fatigue. So stack this with the gloves, and so Vicious Mockery can apply both of these effects, or and so can Dissonant Whispers. You'll be able to really stack up those mental fatigue charges, being able to deal extra psychic damage, or just basically guaranteeing that your um, your enchantment spells will be able to take effect. Uh, but you can swap this out for something else if you like. Next up, the Ring of Mind Shielding. I feel like if we're going to be so good at enchantment spells, we should make it so that we don't get affected by them. You have advantage on saving throws against being charmed. Uh, this is just here for flavor. Feel free to swap this out for something else. Since we're playing as a Gif Yankee, maybe you want to slap a sword on this build or chug some, uh, what do you call them, uh, giant strength potions to be able to have a high amount of strength so that you can bonk enemies on the head with your staff then or your sword or whatever you want to pick. Uh, you could throw on the Band of the Mystic Scoundrel, which would allow you to to cast your enchantment spells as a bonus action after using a weapon. So you could make this sort of a half martial fighter if you really, really wanted to. Yeah, those are a couple of other options for you. And overall, that is the build. And I will say, like I say, it's a fairly simple build overall, but I really, really like it. It's one of my favorite battlefield control spells builds in the game. And I actually do stand by my recommendation as a, as a build for beginners. I think it's a fairly simple to understand concept, and I think it can be applied quite easily to most situations. And it's going to feel good to play throughout the game, as long as you make sure you get your hands on the right equipment to boost that spell safety C to maximize your chances of getting these effects off all throughout the game. And again, playing as a Gith Yankee would give you a ton of options, astral knowledge for roleplay is great, as well as being able to have access to medium armor if you really want to go down that route and just make sure you're that bit more tanky. Honestly, I really, really like this build. I keep saying it, but it's true. Uh, and you'll see from the combat footage, like I said, this build just really, really is effective. It can shut down entire encounters if played right. And even so, it's always going to be helpful. Just being able to take one or two tough enemies out of a combat encounter to whittle down the weaker forces and then come back to the strong guys later or just get the strong guys out the way right off the bat with something like, hold, like the hold spells. Like, there's just not too much else to say. This build just does its job and it does it well. Uh, again, maybe not my most creative thing out there, maybe not the most complicated thing I've ever made, but who cares? It's a fun time. So give it a try if you haven't already. Definitely going to try tackling Illusion or Conjuration soon, so let me know if you want to see that come up, or maybe you want to give me some ideas on how to make that interesting. Anyways, thank you all so much for watching, and I will see you all next time.